உங்களோட பிளேஸ் கேட்டு மேடம் எஸ் சார் ஐம் ஸ்டார்டிங் ஜஸ்ட் ஜஸ்ட் அ மினிட் A very warm good morning. I Dr. Komal Patel, Associate Professor of Paro Institute of Pharmacy, Paro University, feel privileged to extend a warm welcome to all dignitaries and participants present here on virtual platform for webinar on medical devices, opportunities and challenges. which is jointly organized by Paro Institute of Pharmacy and Indian Pharmacopeia Commission Paro Institute of Pharmacy is one of the uh, many successful venture of Paro University which has a reputation for pioneering in pursuit of academic excellence Paro University is a state private university with amalgamation of 34 institute offering more than 250 programs and pursuing their education in various streams paro university ensures 360 degree learning and career building opportunities during Uh, the learning period of that after paro institute of pharmacy is a constituent institute under the paro university and contributing in the field of pharmacy education and research since 2004 the institute is approved by the aict and pci the institute has state of art infrastructure instructional facility and has grown impressively in both size and reputation institute has become the preferred choice for many among all other self financed institutes we are happy to have you uh, with us the faculty of pharmacy paro university dr abhay karamsi who has consistently uh, been the pillar of strength and source of motivation for all of us i kindly request our beloved team dr abhay karamsi sir to welcome the gathering good morning greeting from paro institute of pharmacy paro university vadodara I take this opportunity to wish you all a very happy Pharmacy Day and extend a warm welcome to all the participants for this webinar on medical devices, opportunities and challenges. I express my sincere thanks to Dr. Vivekananda Kalai Selvan, Principal Scientific Officer, Indian Pharmacopeia Commission, for collaborating with us in hosting this national webinar and for the technical support. Thank you, sir. My special thanks to Dr. Joy Prakash, Secretary and Scientific Director, Indian Pharmacopeia Commission, for being a part of this webinar despite of his busy schedule. Thank you, sir. I also express my heartfelt thanks to all the speakers of this webinar and the IPC team for making this webinar happen. Established in the year 2004, Paro Institute of Pharmacy is a constituent institute. under paro university vadodara a research oriented student centric multidisciplinary state private university since 2015 and within a short span of time it has emerged as a renowned higher education university the ministry of health and family welfare government of india commenced the metro vigilance program of india 
to monitor the safety of medical devices associated adverse events in the Indian population. I am happy to inform that the Department of Pharmacy Practice, Paro Institute of Pharmacy, Paro University, is approved as a medical device adverse event monitoring center in association with MBPI since December 2019. The effective implementation of this program will protect the safety of device users substantially by preventing the adverse effects and reducing the risk associated with the use of medical devices. Medical devices provide many opportunities and equal number of challenges. And through this webinar, we shall learn to provide high quality, safe and effective medical devices and ensure public health benefit and the safety of patients, healthcare, co-workers and the community at large. Thank you all and I once again welcome you to this webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for your warm words. We are honored to have Dr. Vivekanandan Kalai Silvan, Principal Scientific of India, request you, sir, to deliver your. Thank you. Respected Dr. Jay Prakash, Secretary on Scientific Director, Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission. Respected Professor Abhay Dharamsi, Dean, Parul University. Other delegates, invited speakers, my team at IPC, very good morning to all of you. On behalf of uh, Material Vigilance Program of India, Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission. Uh, we express our sincere thanks and gratitude to Parul University for arranging this webinar within a short span of time. I'm sure this uh, seminar, I mean, this webinar is going to be benefited at large for the healthcare professionals in terms of reporting of adverse events associated with the use of uh, medical devices. As Professor Abhay Karamsi shall mention that it is one of our uh, you know, medical devices adverse events monitoring center. So this webinar is organized under the umbrella of uh, Medical Devices Adverse Events Monitoring Center. We are extremely happy to note that around 150 participants have registered already for this uh, webinar, including doctors, biomedical engineers, PharmD professionals, and others. So main the aim and objective of this webinar is to inculcate the culture of adverse events reporting or to promote the culture of adverse events reporting associated with the medical devices. Uh, we have been successful in uh, ensuring the safety of uh, medicines through the Pharmacovigilance Program of India. So on the lines of Pharmacovigilance Program of India, we are uh, you know, trying to establish a capacity building and enhance the culture of adverse events reporting associated with medical devices. So we are confident that this webinar will help the uh, stakeholders as well as uh, other industries to participate in this program and uh, for effective implementation of this MVPA, and this kind of webinars will be really helpful uh, for the program. So with this, uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity and uh, we wish the webinar grand success. Thank you very much. Komal, over to you. Thank you so much, sir. Secretary, come scientific director. I request you, sir, to... We are honored to have with us Dr. Jay Prakash, Secretary, come scientific director in charge, Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission, I request you, sir, to kindly share special remarks on this occasion. Thank you, Dr. Komal. Good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. Respected Dr. Abhay Dharamshi, Dean, Faculty of Pharmacy, Parun University. 
all the invited experts for this important event. My colleague, Dr. Vikas Medhi, professor at the Department of Pharmacology, PGI Chandigarh. Ms. Amrita, scientist, scientist here from Sri Chitra Institute of Medical Sciences and Technology at Trivandrum and the galaxy of the audience present today to listen to this important webinar topics. So at the outset, I extend my warm greetings to Parul Institute of Pharmacy and to my team lead, led by Dr. V. Kalai Selvan for organizing this important event on medical devices, opportunities and challenges. As you will be aware that the medical devices are increasingly being used for saving the life of the patients and therefore the safety of medical devices, the safety of each medical device is important from the patient's perspective. Therefore, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, had decided to put in place the systems and procedures for monitoring the adverse event on account of the medical devices. And with the effort of the institute colleagues and with the effort of the then director, Dr. Jian Singh, now we have been able to establish the National Coordination Center for Material Vigilance Program of India, initially at Sri Chitra Institute and now at the at Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission in Rajabad. As my colleague Dr. Selvin has pointed out, the need for reporting of the adverse event, the establishing an ethical culture of reporting, it has been, it is the right time to take initiatives from all fronts that the, the correct reports are submitted to all the, through all the concerned medical devices monitoring centers, which reach to the National Coordination Center at IPC. I request all the audience that they should take interest in reporting if the adverse event occurs on account of medical devices so that <clears throat> at least the prophylactic measures can be taken in future and the concerned authorities in a timely manner they are they are uh, they are sensitized to take the appropriate regulatory measures with the effort of all of you i am sure that this culture of reporting will be improved will be improved in the time to come and the day will come when, when we will be having our indigenous data based on which based on which the regulatory measures for safety of medical devices are uh, will be taken and the CDSO is playing a vital role in taking the regulatory interventions as and when such cases are reported to the apex regulatory authority of the country. The effort of just a single person will not work 
but we consulted efforts from all, including the industry stakeholders, the regulators, the academicians, the health professionals, and the paramedics, all need to join hands in correct and ethical reporting of the adverse events on account of medical devices. I advise my colleague, Dr. Kalei Selman, that let such events be organized on continuous basis in future as well. And not only in one zone of the country, but in different zones of the country, so that the information reaches far and wide and nobody is left behind. So with these words, I will not be taking much time and everybody is eager to listen to the technical session, which has been meticulously designed by the team of IPC and the Parul Institute of Pharmacy. So I wish you all a grand success in the effort of organizing this webinar and let the deliberations be recorded and the positive outcomes, the negativities be removed from the minds of the persons and let us work for towards the patient safety mission and to help the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Government of India in achieving its mission. Thank you very much for your attentive listening and I wish you all the best in all your efforts. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your such a motivating words. With this brief inaugural, we now start the technical session. I would invite our first speaker, Dr. Shetranjay Shukla, to deliver talk on Material Vigilance Program of India, an overview, concepts, and terminologies. Dr. Shetranjay Shukla is a scientific assistant at Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission. I now kindly request you, sir, to take over the session. Thank you, madam. <clears throat> Am I audible to you all? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very good morning to all the delegates and my colleagues and the participants who have joined uh, the webinar. Uh, first of all, a very happy pharmacist day to all of you. Myself, Dr. Shatrunjay, and uh, today I'll be sharing uh, an overview of this program, that is Material Vigilance Program of India, its concept and the ter terminologies. Is the screen is visible to all? Yes, sir, it is visible. Okay. Yes, so uh, before uh, moving on my topic, as uh, all you know that I am associated with the Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission. So first of all, uh, I would like to uh, brief the services that is being offered by our institute, Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission. Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission publishes the Indian Pharmacopoeia on a periodic interval. It's a book of legal standards that is being published by the Indian Pharmacopoeia Commission on behalf of Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. This book is published in order to uh, maintain uh, or to follow the rules of Drugs and Cosmetics Act 1940 and the rules 1945. 
IPC also provides IPRS, that is Indian Pharmacopoeial Reference uh, Standards and Impurity Standards, so that our stakeholders uh, can comply with the pharmacopoeial requirements of the Indian Pharmacopoeia. As of now, IPC has uh, around 600 IPRS and 150 impurity standards in our stock. And the detailed list of IPRS and impurity standards uh, is available on our website, ipc.gov.in. IPC also publishes the National Formulary of India in order to enhance the rational use of medicine among uh, the healthcare practitioners and others. Apart from these services, IPC also runs two national level programs. One is PVPI, that is Pharmacovigilance Program of India. And another is MVPI, that is Material Vigilance Program of India. Pharmacovigilance Program of India is exclusively for drugs and vaccines, while the MVPI is for uh, devices and diagnostics. So, the Material Vigilance. Material vigilance is a systematic study of adverse events associated with the devices and diagnostics and their follow-up. Please uh, be noted that this program is exclusively for devices and diagnostics. So, first of all, what comes under devices? So, as per the latest uh, notification from Gazette of India, uh, all the devices which includes an instrument, apparatus, appliance, implant, materials, other articles, whether they are used alone or in combination, that too includes a software or any accessory, which is intended by its manufacturer to be used alone or in combination for human beings or on animals, that doesn't achieve its primary intended action in or human beings by any pharmacological or immunological or any metabolic means which may assist in its intended function by such means for one or more of the specific purposes. Number one, the diagnosis, prevention, monitoring, treatment or alleviation of any disease or any disorder or for any injury or for any disability investigation, replacement or modification or support of the anatomy or of a physiological process of human beings, supporting or sustaining life, disinfection of the medical devices or control of consumption. So all these things that falls under these categories, they comes under devices and diagnostics. In our country, uh, devices are being regulated by the Medical Devices Rule 2017. This rule uh, has notified by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India on 31st of January 2017, while the same is effective from 1st of January 2018, Pan-India. And the provisions related to the import of devices and diagnostics, manufacturing of devices and diagnostics, labeling, distribution, sale are covered under the Medical Devices Rule. 2017. Now, how the uh, devices and diagnostics are different from drugs? You see, the devices are based on the engineering, while the drugs, they are based on the chemistry as well as on the pharmacology. In devices, we study safety, their performance, their accuracy, while in case of drugs, we uh, study their safety as well as efficacy. In drugs, Clinical trials are there, while in case of devices, clinical evaluation or biocompatibility studies are there. In drugs, uh, good manufacturing uh, practices are being followed, while in devices, quality management system are the followed. Local and systemic toxicity is an issue in case of drugs, while the biocompatibility uh, issues are there for devices. Devices have a short product life cycle, while the drugs, they are having longer product life cycle. In drugs, we study drug-drug interaction, while devices, we study their malfunction and characteristics fluctuation. So, the classification, uh, 
मेडिकल डिवाइसेज एंड डायग्नोस्टिक्स दे आर क्लासीफाइड एज पर मेडिकल डिवाइस रूल टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन इन टू फोर क्लास रेंजिंग फ्रॉम क्लास ए टू क्लास डी दिस क्लासिफिकेशन इज बेस्ड ऑन द रिस्क वट दे आर इम्पोजिंग टू द पेशेंट टू द हेल्थ केयर प्रोफेशनल एज वेल एज टू द थर्ड पार्टी तो क्लास ए आर कैटेगराइज एज लो रिस्क कैटेगरी इट मीन्स द डिवाइस इट फॉल्स अंडर दिस क्लास ए they are imposing the minimal risk to the patient to the healthcare professionals and to the third parties uh devices like thermometers tongue depressors surgical dressings cotton swabs they falls under this category class b devices that is low to moderate risk they are uh, they includes hypodermic needles suction equipment hematology reagent kits class c that is moderate to high risk category this category includes lung ventilators bone fixation plates intraocular lenses while the class d that is the highest risk imposing category uh, and it includes cardiac stunts implantable defibrillators cochlear implants see uh, if you if any of uh, our audience want to the de- want to detail want to see the detailed the classification of devices that you can uh, write to me or directly you can go to cdsu website so that uh, there uh, you can check the detailed classification of uh, devices as of now uh, these devices that is uh, on your screen they are regulated under the medical devices rules disposable hypodermic syringes needles perfusion sets substances used for in vitro diagnostics including blood grouping sera stunts catheters intraocular lenses cannulas bone cement heart valves scalp pin set implants internal prosthetic replacement ablation devices ligatures sutures staplers iud's condoms tubal rings dressings umbilical tapes blood and blood component bags nebulizer see uh, uh, these uh, these are the latest edition under the medical devices rules and uh, uh, these are effective from uh, some some of devices are effective from january 2020 while uh, some are effective from april 2020 so uh, coming on our topic material vigilance as we all know that the no drug is completely safe for the human actually uh, this is the right dose and right times that decides the safety of drug similarly in case of medical devices no devices and diagnostics are completely devoid of risk therefore it is very essential to have a monitoring system uh, to uh, so that we can ensure the safety of our patients and the healthcare professional uh, i have a short video for you all so kindly have a look
similar to uh, these orthopedic implants we have also have number of adverse events that is associated with different different devices uh, i will tell you few examples like uh, last to last year uh, we got to know that a man who was carrying a oxygen cylinder near to uh, a, a mri machine in a very prestigious hospital in mumbai that uh, that man was instantly being sucked up by the mri machine and he instantly died in a uh, another case five newborn babies uh, who were kept in a phototherapy unit in a uh, hospital in patiala punjab because uh, malfunctioning of device that incubator got a fire and the, all the new infant um, babies uh, they were burned alive and charred to death similarly uh, cardiac stunts uh, that is implanted in uh, number of patients pan india we have received adverse events like dissection and thrombosis uh that is being associated with the uh, poor quality of the so after number of horrific of uh, malfunctioning of devices and poor quality of uh, devices the ministry of health and family welfare has approved to start a program that is named material vigilance program of india on february uh, 2015 so that the safety of the patients and the quality in our country and finally this program came into existence on july 6 2015 at indian pharmacopeia commission when the then dcgi dr g n singh inaugurated this program in order uh, to uh functioning of this program uh this program has uh, three partners ipc is serving as a national coordination center while the nhsrc that is national health system resource center is our technical support and resource center while the sct imst that is sri chitra tirunal institute of medical science and technology trivandrum kerala is serving as a national collaborating center and uh, uh, this is a, a flow diagram uh, uh, of how this program works you see at the bottom uh, there are healthcare professionals manufacturers importers or uh, users or any third party that is being aware of any uh, malfunctioning of devices or any adverse event that is associated with devices and diagnostics if they are aware of any adverse event they can report such adverse events to our nearest amc that is adverse drug reaction monitoring center as well as mdmc uh, medical device adverse event monitoring center for so for you all audience uh, our nearest uh, in case of you our nearest mdmc is paral university vadodara gujarat research associate uh, at our mdmc they uh, uh, fill out that particular information provided by you all in a defined format and sent to us we at ipc analyze uh, uh, those reports first of all for their completeness then we uh, review it and uh, uh, discuss with uh, particular subject experts and if we found any signal then uh, we can communicate these signals or any findings to the uh, regulatory authority of india that is cdsco for taking appropriate regulatory action in case of uh, manufacturers or license holders they can directly submit their adverse events associated with uh, with their devices to the cdsco or to the ncc mbpi ncc mbpi that is ipc so uh, as of now uh, we have 51 medical devices adverse event monitoring centers in india and uh, each medical devices adverse event monitoring center has a coordinator or a deputy coordinator and a research associate so the coordinator is basically responsible for the expansion as uh, expansion of the program to the maximum extent possible he is also responsible for coordination uh, with the ncc mvpi for the better implementation of the program and he is 
uh, and for sending regular feedback to the NCC and BPI. While the research associate who is uh, being posted at MDMC is responsible for the collection and the follow up of the medical devices adverse events, he is also responsible to conduct uh, CMEs, training programs, and other awareness programs to the healthcare professionals of the same hospital or nearby hospital. Uh, now, uh, I will brief the roles and responsibilities of each of our partnering organizations. So, starting from IPC, IPC is basically responsible for the coordination with the all partners of the program and stakeholders. IPC is also responsible for the expansion and the upgradation of the tools and techniques available under this program. Recognition of new medical devices, adverse event monitoring centers throughout India. Recruitment and the deployment of the research associates, Pan India. The data collation, their analysis and signal detection is a prime function of IPC. And the publication of resource materials related to MVPI. While the Sri Chitra Tirunal Institute of Medical Science and Technology is there to provide R&D supports uh, to the program, uh, SCTI MSC is also responsible for providing technical support in data analysis and release of medical devices alert. NHSRC is our technical support partner and responsible for preparation of standard operating procedures, newsletters, and the manuals related to the devices and diagnostics. They also extend their support in identification of new MDMCs. Uh, the CDSO uh, being the national regulatory authority, they will ensure the safety, efficacy, and quality of medical devices. They do take appropriate regulatory measures, actions based on the inputs, what we are uh, regular, uh, regularly sending to them. They also uh, do audits and inspection of the manufacturing and storage sites of the medical devices. So this program is, uh, uh, is in budding stage. So as of now, uh, we have identified 51 uh, dedicated MDMCs across the country. We have also developed a online syllable a medical device adverse event reporting form that is uh, that will be discussed by uh, my colleague Mr. Pawan following my presentation. We have also developed a reference manual uh, for the devices and diagnostics in order to help our stakeholders and it is available uh, at IPC for sale and uh, till now we have received more than 3000 uh, MDA reports associated with the devices and diagnostics. Now I will be briefing uh, a few terminologies that is used uh, under this program. The first one is adverse event. Any unexpected or inappropriate medical occurrence, any unintended disease or any injury or any inconvenient uh, clinical signs including laboratory findings in any subject, users or persons, whether, uh, whether they are related or not related to the device. This causal uh, this causality assessment is uh, subject to uh, further analysis. There are three types of adverse events: serious, sorry, two types of adverse events: serious or non-serious, whether they are expected or unexpected, or whether they are frequent or rare. The corrective action and the preventive action. See, the preventive action is basically uh, action uh, taken to prevent occurrence of any undesirable uh, situation while the corrective action is uh, taken to prevent reoccurrence of the same. Post-market surveillance is the practice of monitoring the safety of a medical devices or diagnostics after it has been released into the market for public use. Uh, this, is uh, uh, this is important, the recall. Recall means any action that is taken by its manufacturer or any authorized agent to remove the devices from the market or to retrieve the devices from any person to, wh to whom it has been supplied because the medical device is hazardous to the health, to the patient, users or any third party or it fails to conform to any claim that is made by its manufacturer relating to its quality, safety or efficacy or doesn't meet the requirement of the medical devices rules 2017. 
the field safety corrective action is an action that is taken by the manufacturer to reduce the risk of death or any serious adverse events associated with the use of device that is already placed onto the market and actions include the return of devices to the supplier or any device modification or device exchange device destruction device retrofit or any advice that is given by manufacturer regarding the use of device field safety notice is a, a simply a communication uh, to the uh, to the customers or to the users sent out by the manufacturers or its legal representative in relation to fsca root cause analysis is a method of problem solving used for identifying the root causes of faults or problems uh, uh, a separate session is there for root cause analysis that is uh, also followed my present uh, that is also uh, uh, will be discussed following my presentation by uh, ms amrita from sct imst uh, now serious adverse event see this definition is very important so that uh, uh, you can differentiate between what is serious and what is non serious a serious adverse event uh, uh, is an untoward medical occurrence associated with the device that leads to death of the patient user or, or third party or any serious deterioration in the health of subject that resulted in a life threatening illness or injury or resulted in a permanent impairment of a body structure or a body function required a patient hospitalization or prolongation of existing hospitalization or resulted in a medical or surgical intervention to prevent the life threatening illness or injury or permanent impairment to a body structure or a body function or anything that led to fetal distress or death or any congenital anomaly or any birth defect all uh, the untoward occurrences that led to uh, uh, the things that i have discussed falls under the category of serious adverse event signal detection means the identifying the pattern of adverse event associated with a particular medical devices that warrant the further investigation of such cases non serious adverse events adverse events other than those that i have discussed in uh, serious adverse event falls under non serious adverse event category frequent one uh, uh, they are very frequent and known rare any untoward medical events that is very unusual and causes a serious injury to the patients comes under rare adverse event category known one that is known and documented already they are known adverse events and unknown uh, adverse events any adverse event the specificity or severity of which is not previously consistent with the current investigation of medical devices or in a simple way we can say the adverse event which is not already known or documented falls under the known adverse event category who can notify such adverse event so you see uh, uh, from the left top you see the manufacturer or their legal representatives like importer distributors hospital managers staff nurses healthcare professionals like doctors physicians pharmacists biomedical engineers and the patient itself or any third party who is aware of such adverse event can report directly to ncc mvpi or to our nearest amcs or mdmcs why to notify you see uh, we all are healthcare professional and so being a healthcare professional it's our uh, moral and ethical responsibility to report uh, such adverse events uh, without any delay to ncc mvpi because to err is human but not to learn from uh, such mistakes and not to communicate the lessons learned from uh, those mistakes is inexcusable what to be notified as i have said to you earlier that any dysfunction or any characteristics fluctuations in devices and diagnostics or any inadequacy in the labeling or instructions that might lead to or have led to the death or any serious adverse events 
in the state of health of a patient or to a user or to a third party must be reported in addition uh, near miss incidents uh, are those uh, adverse events that have actually taken place but also uh, uh, the incidents or such adverse event was avoided to the attention and action of the relevant people such actions also uh, need to be reported to nccm vpi and the tools uh, for reporting uh, such adverse events are medical device adverse event reporting form this is a, a very simple and online fillable form it, it is uh, freely available to our website and to the parul university uh, following my presentation my colleague mr pawan i will detail you uh, this form and how to fill this form in addition to this reporting form we have also a, a mobile app you can download it from google play store and report such adverse events otherwise we also have a toll free number that is 18001803024 you can uh, uh, report adverse events through this toll free helpline number also now uh, what are the criteria for reporting adverse events so any event that meets all three criteria a b c must be reported first of all an untoward or any undesirable uh, event has to be there number 2 the manufacturer's device or diagnostics is suspected to be a contributory cause of such events and number 3 that particular uh, hazardous or undesirable occurrence led to or might have led to any serious adverse events to the patients to the user or to the third party must be reported to nccm vpi this is a dummy copy of our uh, reporting form that that will be discussed later in addition to uh, device reporting form we have also developed a uh, personal protective equipment uh, adverse event reporting form this is also a one page uh, online fillable form that is also being available to ipc websites and uh, with the parul university so in case uh, if you encounter any adverse effects uh, associated with the ppes then you can fill this very short online one page online fillable form and report to adverse events related to ppes to the nccm vpi what are the information that is being captured in the mda form the uh, first of all the reporter information uh, information associated with the devices and diagnostics uh, adverse event details whether the event is serious or non serious uh, patient information like uh, uh, their age their body weight that's it and the outcome what are the action taken by the healthcare professionals or manufacturers and the causality whether the device is or diagnostics are associated or contributory uh, cause of that particular adverse event or not how can uh, uh, you identify mda you can check medical records lab reports radiology reports like you can check biomedical log registers uh, you can question uh, from clinicians and to the patients or any third party uh, you can also see the safety alerts that is issued by a uh, regulatory body of india or abroad you can also visit different departments of a hospital and you can create awareness so by such means you can identify any medical device associated adverse events now this is a very important what are the timelines see as per medical devices rule uh, there uh, is a very strict timeline for the manufacturers or the license holders any uh, serious adverse events associated with the device or diagnostics of a particular manufacturer so that manufacturer particular manufacturer or license holder must report such adverse events within 15 calendar days of becoming aware of an event while in case of non serious adverse events the timeline is 30 calendar days one thing that i need to clear here that this reporting timeline is basically for the manufacturer and the license holders they are bound to report adverse events related to their devices and diagnostics within the, this time frame but 
for the healthcare professionals or any user or any third party this program is entirely voluntary so uh, you are not bound to uh, report such adverse events associated with devices and diagnostics what happens uh, when you send a uh, mda to the ncc the ncc collects and ensure first of all the ncc ensures the completeness of relevant information in that form and if necessary we uh, review and investigate the particular incidents uh, from stakeholders or other regulatory agencies and device users including hospital staff then we consult uh, the part, uh, particular subject experts if necessary like uh, if you receive any uh, stunt related adverse events then we consult with the interventional cardiologist or if we receive any hip implant related adverse events then uh, we consult with uh, any orthopedic surgeon we also disseminate information uh, or other corrective actions to regulatory authorities and to our centers as well we also exchange information with other regulatory bodies what are the benefits of this program uh with the help of uh, material vigilance program uh, we can generate the device safety data that is exclusively based on the indian population uh with the help of this program uh, uh evidence based the regulatory interventions can be taken by the regulatory authority of our country educational initiatives to the healthcare professionals or, or to others can be undertaken benefit risk ratio of the devices and diagnostics can be assessed updation of any uh, new leaflet or new adverse events or any warning or any contraindications or any precautionary measures uh, can be shared and population specific data like uh, pediatric or geriatric or pregnant uh, uh, women uh, related data can be generated safe and effective use of devices and diagnostics can be achieved in our country and the public confidence in the government initiatives can be restored why this program is important you see uh, the safety of more than 1.35 billion indian people is a you know very a big concern to the uh, government of india and to provide safe and uh, effective medical treatment that includes devices and diagnostics as well is one of the mandate of our government in addition some of the studies some of the studies that have uh, revealed that uh, uh, adverse events associated with devices and diagnostics uh, that leads to hospitalization or prolongation of existing hospitalization constitute a significant burden on the patients or to their relatives as well as on the country and to avoid the substandard and incompatible devices and diagnostics that is being flooded in our market uh, this program uh, is very important uh, these are uh, our contact details uh, you can uh, catch us on uh, www.ipc.gov.in we also have a toll free number 1801801802324 we also have a web page uh, on facebook and uh, on twitter you can also write to us on mbpi.ipcindia@gmail.com thank you very much thank you sir it was indeed a very informative session uh, now we are moving toward to our next scientific session so i would invite our next speaker dr vikas mehdi to deliver talk on functioning of mdmc capacity building and challenges dr vikas mehdi is mbbs md for aims sir is professional professor and additional medical superintendent at the pgim er chandigarh and he is also coordinator of both pharmacovigilance and material vigilance program He is having a vast experience as the chief editor of Journal of Pharmacology. With this brief introduction, I now kindly request you, sir, to take over the session. Please, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, 
good morning everybody uh, can you uh, make me co host because i need to put the slide Uh, you have to make me co-host. You have to make me co-host. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Wait. Sir, uh, you are co-host now. Okay. I'll just upload the slide. Yes, sir. Can you hear me and can you see my slide? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. So thank you very much for giving us the opportunity. I happen to uh, go near to your institute, uh, university. I could see the signboard because I used to go to Suman Bidapit. I think in that uh, similar road, I think, no? ahead of Suman Bidapit. So last year also I had gone. Yes. So uh, as I said, uh, good morning, everybody, and happy Pharmacist Day. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, how to establish a metro vigilance uh, center in a, you know, particularly tertiary care centers, uh, and some of our experience uh, as per uh, pharmacovigilance centers and metro vigilance centers and other uh, associated with uh, hemo vigilance. Uh, somebody put a question uh, on the first presentation that uh, uh, some of the metals like cobalt, uh, should we uh, report to hemo vigilance or metro vigilance? As it was related to the device, so answer is you have to report to metro vigilance program. So hemovigilance, you only report to in case of a blood transfusion or any blood product related to ADR, you have to report to hemovigilance that coordinating centers in NIB, National Institute of Biology. So uh, <clears throat> the first lecture, it was beautifully talked about uh, metro vigilance, uh, different type of materials available in the market and in the hospitals and how to report to it, whom to report it, everything has been in detail. Now, recently on 17, uh, we had celebrated uh, World Patient Safety Day. And during that we discussed, it's not the question of uh, patient safety. It is also, we talk about safety of our healthcare workers. So this is very important. As you know, during the pandemic, we learned that how to save the healthcare worker as well as patient also. So all the national program, it is very important, like as a part of pharmacovigilance or metrovigilance, we have been working uh, together uh, in terms of you know, patient safety and as well as healthcare worker safety also. So theme of healthcare worker was, uh, we should give a priority to patient safety. Like you say that normally you say one person is hospitalized. So if we ask the patient, are you safe in a hospital? Because if you happen to ask that, uh, then you realize that you have to take a stringent SOP in order to patient safety. Because many times we do a mistake and that mistake should not be, you know, uh, you know ultimately uh, results should not be in a patient harm. So one of the important concepts we never discuss is uh, patient safety in terms of patient safety, the medication error or, you know, uh, even devices error, uh, it is need to be discussed. So uh, if you have a SOP, stringent SOP in terms of you know, prevention of any patient harm in terms of medication or in terms of any of the devices. So a uh, slogan is uh, safe health worker, safe patient, and it should call for action. And we should speak up about patient safety and health worker safety is there. Now coming to Metro Vigilance, as earlier speaker already said, that we need to look at that it's not only uh, the materials we use, because you should realize that how many materials we use in a particular uh, ward or particular hospital. 
So those who are working on a particular ward, you should make a list. If you happen to go to medicine, how many materials you use? Okay. If you happen to go to uh, surgery, how many materials you use? Now, along with devices, you need to also see that there are a lot of devices. There are a lot of devices uh, we, which we use along with drug eluting stents. Like in cardiac, we have a lot of drug eluting stents we use. So, whenever we use any of the procedure, we always make a risk assessment. So you happen to uh, talk to a regulator, so you happen to uh, talk to a person who did an audit, you know that while performing any of the procedure, you always, uh, you know, categorize a critical phase of that. So there you can identify that why critical phase need to be identified because you can prevent such error or prevent sub, uh, the subsequent, you know, harm to the patient. So if you can identify these are the critical phase and if there is not followed, then it can have a consequences. So, and the monitoring mechanism is very important. Now, how the monitoring mechanism that if you take example of a patient, they come to the OPD and you measure a blood pressure, simple example, I always give. So if you take an example that earlier used to take a spigmo manometers. Now that is a mercury manometer, so we do not use right now because of uh, you know apprehension of mercury poisoning. We use aneroid. Now you take an example of earlier that if we use a spigmo manometer, that means you need to calibrate that instrument once in a year. Right now we use an aneroid marker, you know, uh, blood pressure instrument that need to be calibrated twice in a year. So if you do not calibrate it, so what will happen? You will have an error. So that means a doctor uh, record a blood pressure and ultimately they will start prescribing antihypertensive. So this is error. It is not uh, you are blaming your doctors, but it is like you do not have a system of calibration. Similarly, you happen to go to lab and many times we found uh, the problem that when your relative is admitted in hospital, then you go to different lab and these labs are not accredited. So you have a different result. So if the reference standard is not there, that particular auto-analyzer, it has not been calibrated or it has not been checked, then you have a different result, the variability comes. So that is why we talk about the accreditation process, uniformity. So Metro Vigilance did not talk about the device quality, but it also talked about the diagnostic, everything A to Z. So in terms of patient management, if you have everything in order, then you have a well management and you can prevent the further damage to the patient. So that is what you need to understand in terms of patient safety and also healthcare worker. Now, medical devices we have already talked about, but I'll give some brief example how as a uh, professional, we should evaluate the quality. Like for example, you take an example of drug and how do you evaluate? So we have a in silico studies, so there you see that, you know, uh, how this drug, potential drug in terms of lead compounds or heat compound, initially heat compounds, then you started, you know, looking at, is it a lead compound? Then you go for the in vitro study, then you go for the in vivo study, then you go for the regulatory toxicity studies. Now here it is important that we do not have much experience of the devices, how we are going to evaluate. Even recently, if we see that, pre-clinical evaluation for devices, for the drug, we have more than 55 labs in India under OECD, OECD because any pre-clinical evaluation in terms of looking at the quality, so you should have the quality in pre-clinical under OECD, Organization of Economic Corporation and Development. So here also any devices, you talk about cardiac stent, you talk about any implant, and even class one, like you use the globes or any of the devices, in the, need to be evaluated in a preclinical evaluation and there are a couple of labs they have started this. So this evaluation, what I'm uh, trying to make you understand is should be evaluated under OECD principle, Organization of Economic Corporation and Development. So we have many labs out of the few labs they started uh, testing for medical devices. Now definition has been already talked about but most important is it's a broad one. You start from diagnosis, you start from prevention, how you're going to monitor, how you're going to manage. 
So in order to elevation of any disease and disorder. So you should include that, uh, like recently there is a, you know, uh, you know, a uh, lot of debate on reuse of catheter, reuse of cardiac catheter. So there it was debated that you know that catheter is, is, is used. Even if you can see some of the studies where after patient died from this, the dead body, they take out the catheter and they sterilize, then they use for, because it is kind of affordability because it is, a, but the question here is how do you maintain in a particular hospital that for reuse, how you maintain the sterilization process? And uh, you know that the question is, uh, uh, though it is uh, uh, cost is less. So there are several examples you can give uh, imminent, uh, how do you maintain the quality? So disinfection of medical device, control, um, like control of concept, contraception, uh, conception, all these are example, but anything as a professional, you need to understand that if you use a device, how do you check it, you know, quality? Like for example, if you ask a graduate professional who are intern, they're using a gloves, if you ask simple question, can you tell me what is, how do you check for quality of the gloves? For example, during pandemic or other days also common days. So when you see there are certain organizations who certify, like you can put while making a specification, is it uh, like uh, BIS certified or is it CE certified, USFDA certified? So this is important that you need to look at that how you maintain the quality and how do you check for the quality. So as you know that in India, we have devices is uh, more than, uh, you know, uh, 3000 devices are there. So out of that, we do not have a capacity as you know, the government has created a big infrastructure uh, in order to, you know, regulate all the devices. But if you see today, early till December 2019, we used to regulate only 23 devices. But right now, uh, the government is regulating around 37 devices. So over a period of time, there will be more infrastructure in terms of regulatory and we'll be able to regulate almost all the devices in the market. However, if you look at US, there are 10,000 devices. So number has been growing, increasing, and there are so many new technology, but as a professional, I'll say that recently I have happened to attend one of the regulatory meeting for the devices. So there are three members they have come and say that uh, this particular devices, which is used in cardiac, you know, uh, disease, and it is a very good technology. Now, moment you put the question, I put that how many product has been sold in Europe last one and one and a half years, and if you see the number, it is not more than five hundred. So. Definitely you'll get to know that, okay, these devices, if it is not more than 500, you get to know that indirectly how popular it is, how it, useful it is. Because many times all the devices, there are different software it is used in an instrument. So there if you see that some of the software is already outdated software. So that is why that any software, you also get to know that, that is it validated. Similarly, all the instrument if you see, start from MRI, PET scan, so everything happened, check for, you know, the quality and how useful for Indian population. Now, as I say that there are uh, in vitro diagnostic devices, you can take an example of, you know, we use in a different hospital, all the instrument, all the in vitro, like I have given an example of a uh, blood pressure or simple, you know, uh, uh, today if you see pulse oximeter, or you take an example of thermogun where we maintain the temperature, so you get an idea that uh, there is a WhatsApp message where that pulse oximeter was put into the little fingers, the middle fingers, all the fingers, and it was given oxygen saturation in a different, you know, uh, result. Somewhere it is 66%, somewhere it is 86%. So that kind of device, it is in the market. That means it is alarming situation. So that need to be looked at. So as a medical professional, as a stakeholders, as a pharmacy graduate, or, or as a nurse says, unless you report all these devices, this, it is not accurate, or then it cannot be corrected and we cannot have a good quality product in the market. Similarly, we use in a lab, we should know how to, you know, uh, calibrate the pipette, simple pipette. So when you happen to go to lab, you should know that what are the check, like suppose these are 72. So you should ask for that, where is the ID number is there? Is there any logbook? what SOP you follow. When 
these instruments were calibrated. Then if it is calibrated, when it was next due for calibration, then these are simple question that will maintain the quality. You can, you can do an audit and it will have a result will be reproducible. So similarly, if we take uh, you know, uh, uh, similar kind of example, like we use a syringe. There are many of these uh, uh, particular syringe we prefer. So in, in case of you know, uh, IV cannula also. So in case of, uh, we use a robotic right, uh, right now, OT table. So everything want to say if we use this, you should know how to check for the quality. Suppose if we take this you know, uh, particular you know, uh, label, so then you can check that whether it is C certified, USFDA certified, or Indian agency they are certified for the quality or not. So in case of therapeutic de device, we know that there is the biggest example we face is a particular hip transplant. Then we have an issue with surgical suture. Unless we have a monitoring system, because in India, what happened, all the surgical suture will be recalled. But the, the, the particular company did not inform anybody how why it is recalled because it was not effective and there is a you know uh, the problem with the surgery with the surgical suture so this is need to be informed it should be also discussed so then only you'll get to know that means you have to have a active monitoring system and there should be a vigilance system is there so uh, regarding the regulation of medical device is already talked about because we uh, uh, we are regulated by drug and cosmetic tech 1940 and 1945 that is pre independence and the latest rule of medical device has come from uh, though it has been implemented from january 2018 but it has been implemented from the medical device from 2020 and we should also look for a new drug clinical trial rules where it has been incorporated and this is because there are a lot of incidents took place, uh, for example, of baby born in, uh, you know, incubator in Kolkata, in Patiala, in other places also. So there are a lot of incidents. That is why the government has implemented the Metro Vigilance Program since 2015 under the umbrella of PVPI program. So though uh, we know that every product has a risk. So, what is your idea is you need to evaluate what is the benefit and risks for any of the devices. So ultimately you should know that how to extract the maximum benefit and we can do it. Communication is very important as a stakeholder. So here if we see that we can do the good communication, if we report to the NCC Metro Vigilance Program, they will communicate to CDSU. And we have already discussed in case of a CDS, we'll make it try to do it within 24 hours. Though for manufacturer, we have a 15 to 30 days time, but it's better to have a good communication with manufacturer also so that it can be communicated and it can be prevented. So we should develop a mechanism in case of any problem, how to prevent the further damage to the patient and to the stakeholders. So medical device adverse even monitoring centers has a great role to play in the tertiary care centers. So though we have around 15 centers, but we need to know that as a coordinator and as a research associate is appointed. So what we did is first is the awareness among all the stakeholders. Like last meeting also, I said that we have, for example, 48 department, total 56 department. Out of that, you can say that how many of the department are mostly used? How many of the department are mostly used devices? Like you say, class A, B, C, D, especially C and D. Like for example, you happen to go to cardiology, they use number of stent, drug relating stent, you happen to go to cardiovascular surgery, there are different stent, pediatric surgery, orthopedics. So what I suggest is that if you can have a uh, number of departments which use mostly the devices, especially C and D devices, then intent, like you can plan it that okay, for this two months, I'll be concentrating on pediatric surgery or, or maybe orthopedic surgery. So then you can intensify. That's not that there are 10 faculties there in the department. We can identify one person who is motivated. So I used to go and take a class in that particular department in their seminar so that they can motivate it and they report to the Metro Vigilance Center of India. So capacity building is very, very important. So one thing is what I did is I have put this agenda into the hospital management board. So in the hospital, they put it that those patients are admitted. 
So they will be attached with a pharmacovigilance form and metrovigilance form and chemovigilance form, so that when the patient is discharged, that nurse's duty is to report if there is an, any ADR. So alternatively, this is one indirect way to make it mandatory. Otherwise, we put it through all the world and also to the mail and whatever newsletter it comes, if you can circulate that new information. Basically, if you can give a feedback to the physician or to the surgeon, so they'll be more interested to participate in the national program. So though the mission, we know that we have to develop culture of reporting, but before that, we have to make it aware, awareness. And this awareness is a continuous program because in our hospital or every hospital, you know that every three years, new PGs come, junior resident comes, then there's a new senior resident. So we put it in the introduction classes that we have a national program, PBPA program, we have a metro vigilance program, and these are the system to report it. So that's how we sensitize that new doctors. And once you say that how to report, whom to report, and if you uh, take the report, uh, receive the report, how to give the feedback, and also training is very important. So we do regular training for this. So training is, is right now, though there is no physical training is there, but there is a training program, which we give it online. So workshop with the research and also WhatsApp group, we circulated all the new information to the stakeholder like nurses, doctor, and OT technician. Now here it is important component for MBPA program because we have to coordinate with uh, biomedical you know, engineer because every hospital like uh, hospital like Ames, PGI, we have a different division of biomedical division. But those who are a you know, peripheral hospital, they may have a consultant. So it's better to have that you coordinate with biomedical engineering, then only you can give the feedback. So development, if you see that, how you can implement that we plan a big uh, retrospective studies. Why it is important? Because we need to also sensitize that MRD people because all the record it comes. So from this MRD, they give the feedback to the consultant. So we plan for a retrospective as well as prospective. So continuously you can monitor. And also one more example is whenever new instrument is come, so we keep in monitoring that because we said that how do you get to know that new instrument has come to the you know, hospital? So we had a coordination with central store because everything it comes to the hospital, it has to be rooted to the central store. So designing medical device or in a word teaching or distribution of complete or whatever poster we put it, that this is how we make it as a metro vigilance club or pharmacovigilance club. So you can see some of the example, you happen to go to like you take the example of hip replacement uh, where implant that there's a big problem, uh, uh, still it is going on. In case of dental also, there's a fire hazard. Recently also in pandemic situation, we had uh, reported with fire hazard. So these are a continuous problem, but only thing is that if you take an example, because if there is some incident take place, if you do not discuss what is the reason for this event had been taken place so that you can have an SOP and this SOP will tell you, uh, tell you that to train the people how to prevent these incidents. So this is one of the example how in PJ we do that attention please adverse event of medical devices. So if you come across what is an event, we just make them understand during the training program and these are the numbers you can report it. So normally you talk to a junior resident and senior resident in a hospital, they're very busy. So what we did is we developed an instrument that if you have any event, though it is a bigger, we have a smaller version also, you just press this alarm button so that in our mobile, it will come that information. So this is what uh, devices we have developed. We have discussed with Dr. Jain Singh during that time. And these are the input. So it is an Android application that you get an information in your mobile that there is a particular adverse event in that particular ward because if we say we have 1200 residents, so every resident will have a coding system. So we'll get to know that who had actually pressed a button for any adverse event. So this was launched, but we wanted to make it a successful one because we want a validation for this uh, particular devices. And we thought in, we'll do it in PGI as well as we'll do it in AIMS Pubenacer, and after that we'll implement. So we had applied to, uh, these are the people who helped me in uh, developing uh, devices. So we had applied to the BIREC so that 
at least we can do all these ADR monitoring centers and uh, MBPA program, we can be implemented. So we approach the BIREC to give the funding because IPC is not a funding agency. So that is what these devices we develop and it, it can be implemented. So this is how we can do it, that how to spread the awareness that there is a system. If you come across any event, please report to the system. So example that how developed country done it, like I had given an example of, you know, error. They have also system of reporting error. So they have a big database. So how this database is going to help you that if you come across any error that you can stringent an SOP. So you discuss the problem and you try to make it that how to prevent the problem. So these are the example that how USMD done in reporting different error so that they can issue a warning and it can be minimized and prevented. Though there are challenges, like we know that uh, most important is stakeholders industry related. So manufacturing need to be taken responsibility and they should also know. Then as a MPPI program, if we make an event, there's a reporting, then it should be communicated through regulatory authority so that it can be minimized or any device. For example, Normally, if you talk to any of the nursing or uh, you know uh, OT technician, technician, so normally you have a problem with uh, you know pump infusion pump. So whether accurately, if you give a dopamine, whether accurately it is delivered or not. So there is an error take place. Now, how to prevent that? So these are common example I can give you that how it can be prevented in the material vigilance program or pharmacovigilance program of India. In practical situation, we have, you know, a lot of practical situation, we have a problem. For example, misinterpretation of vigilance, metro vigilance or pharmacovigilance, people do not report because there is, you know, high of reporting because they think that if they report, so they may be uh, responsible for this, they may be accountable. So what we say that whenever you get the report, we just explain it that it is a good culture that they should uh, report to the system. It's not the question of fear that they're not going to be reporting. At the same time, we also give the education and train so that we have a trained manpower, skilled manpower in terms of quality or in terms of maintenance, because it is very important that if we maintain all the instrument well or all the devices, if we can check the quality, then it will be good for the patient safety as well as for us also. So this is what all the factors we need to be evaluated and you need to also think of how actively you can monitor, how actively it can be prevented, or at least you can minimize the problem. So overall, if you see that uh, in uh, most of the hospital, though right now number is uh, 15, approximately 15 metro vigilance program of India, but if we can coordinate with other, like in pharmacovigilance, we have 300, more than 300 centers. So if they come across, any of this issue with the materials or devices, they should know that, that we can report through that to the NCC so that we can have a big database and tomorrow we can think that, okay, we'll have a self-reliance for any of the devices. We had several issues with the devices for one of the example of hip implant. So overall, if we see in conclusion that we talk about patient safety related to patient, uh, all the devices we use, and we should also train, unless you train the manpower will not be successful. We should have a skilled manpower. We should train them that how to report, whom to report. And if there is a report, they should also know what is going to have, how to minimize the problem. That is what we need to do it. Thank you very much. So if you have any questions, please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Any questions? Thank I think you very much. Couple. Yes, yeah. yes. There are uh, many questions, sir, in our chat box. Yeah. So uh, one by one, we are starting. Uh, what are the quality tests that a new medical devices has to undergo before releasing in the market for public use? Like drugs have uh, clinical trials. So yeah. is there any such kind of testing facilities test required for medical devices also? Yeah. So depending on the uh, you know uh, devices like we say ABCD, so there is a testing take place. I said initially non-clinical evaluation. So we have the facilities right now in uh, India also. 
under OECD Organization of Economic Progress and Development. So preclinical evaluation is also done as well as clinical evaluation, both similar. But here it is very important that any devices, uh, you know, class C and D, so we look for a biodegradability. So any, any in concept, if we see anything we use for more than six months, we also look for, you know, how uh, the tissue is going to react. So one thing is that biodegradability, and second thing is also it can affect the tissue or not, or to the system, systemic toxicity that will, like one of the example that if you have a hip, trans, uh, hip uh, implant, so where there is a metal is released, like cadmium or any of the metal, then you have to also know that whether it is going to affect the vital organs. So normally when you evaluate, you initially ask for a vital organ, then other organs that we do. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, another question for participant is, do all hospitals need a biomedical engineer for a proper management of MBPI? Is it yeah, but many, many, uh, many of us, like in Albany Institute and uh, PGI, we have a separate department on engineering department. Under it, we have a the big division of biomedical engineering. But those who are in a peripheral medical college, they have a consultant. They may not have a regular one, but they have a consultant. So in this program, when you uh, you know uh, start the program, you should have a good coordination in biomedical engineering because you know that uh, you have a several expertise. If you see radiological, we use CT scan, simple X-ray machine, MRI, uh, different instruments. So there are different software. So you need to have an electronic engineer also. As I said that any instrument, if you use a particular software, you should also know that this software licensing, validation, everything you need to check also. Thank you. Uh, we are also having a few more questions like uh, what are the visual disturbance uh, that is experienced after the LASIK procedure? Yeah. Uh, so for that, uh, like uh, improper irregular corneal uh, segmentism. So should such events be considered as a reportable event? Yeah. And uh, so, uh, how can what, such... Yeah. What do you say is any, any of this abnormality or any of the event we advise to report? Because we do not know, is it because of, uh, you know, in terms of quality of devices, there is a problem or there may be problem during the surgery also while doing that. If the surgery is not proper, so you go for a root cause analysis. So idea is that if there is a problem in the, you know, devices, you get to know that we can generate the data. So even the LASIKs also, you should report it. I advise to report. Okay, sir. Uh, we are having one more question. Like uh, under Medical Device Rule 2017, information regarding in vitro diagnostics medical devices is given. Uh, can you share information regarding in vivo medical devices such as uh, stands or valves? See, there are, as I say, that there is a huge number of list of devices, but we only regulate 37 now. So if you take an example of in vitro, you take an example of like a different department, you can make a list of devices used. So there you have to see, even it is not regulated, but at least if we can uh, monitor it or if we can report it, then it will be, have a, we have a big database so that uh, tomorrow when uh, regulatory authority expand their you know, infrastructure, they can uh, have it well regulated. That is more one more benefit. So uh, you would, our duty is to like, I used to look after cardiac center for almost four years. You know that, I know that how uh, devices are used. So that is why you need to be more vigilant for this. Um, uh, sir, we are having one more and last question. Right? Can we report common and known adverse event related to medical devices or do we have to report uh, only serious and unknown events? What our advice is from the program that anything you come across, you report because many of the devices uh, do it is well adverse effect, but you may not know whether it is in Indian related or not. So we want the Indian data. So when you look at the textbook, it is written a particular adverse effect with the devices. So you may not know it is whether it is India centric or not. That is why we wanted to develop a database for India centric. So anything you come across, please report. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. It was a really very information, info, informative session. And thank you for very interesting, uh, interesting interaction with us. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So I have one more meeting with DST. So uh, can I leave? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.
uh, dear particip participants uh, now we are moving